Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the installation of our newest product for the DB9 and DB9 Gen 4 series of pistols, and that's the extended takedown plate. Uh, we get a lot of emails about uh, wanting a better takedown plate for field stripping and things. Ours is about 30% wider overall, uh, so it's not sticking out so far that you're going to have a hard time finding holsters, which will be producing holsters as well. <clears throat> but also, uh, it doesn't catch or anything like that. So it's, an, it's big enough you can actually get your hands on it. All right, so let's go over tools you're going to need. You're going to need your 90 degree pick. You need a small flathead screwdriver, brass and polymer hammer, three 30 second punch, small needle nose pliers, and one of your large flat uh, pin punches. Doesn't matter what size, this will be for putting the spring back in. All right, so let's go ahead and, and your bench block, of course. So let's go ahead and lock and clear. We're visually and physically empty. One of my favorite things about the new Gen 4 Diamondback, slide lock. Makes a big difference on this little guy. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna take down, or remove the slide, set it off to the side. All right. Now, these pins are knurled, okay, and they are, uh, at this point, I have honestly forgotten which side is which, because they alternate it, uh, knurled on left, knurled on right, knurled on left, and we're not messing with the uh, sear housing, so we're not even going to pull that out. Um, so it should be drive left, then right then left but we've had the gun part so many times i honestly don't remember and being that it's one of our uh, test pistols it's it's pretty tore up inside so if you start this part and the knurling's on the opposite side you don't see knurling when you first knock it out switch it around all right just because i've done this one so many times i'm not sure which it's supposed to go ideally it should go drive the front blocking pin from left to right and then the second locking block pin from right to left. And then the third locking block pin should go left to right again. Now, before we go pulling this thing apart, the spring that is for the slide lock on this it rests underneath the locking block and comes up at an angle and latches into there. That's the first thing we're going to want to disconnect because when you pull it up, the whole locking block comes with it. All right. So just go ahead and pull your slide lock and spring out. Next, we're going to pull the locking block completely out. All right. And you can go ahead and leave your trigger and trigger return springs attached if you want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our straight pick and push down underneath whichever angle you can get. Oh, and the spring may do that. If it pops straight out, just go ahead and remove that. I did not catch it. So hold on. Okay. All right, so we've come across the first uh, thing. This spring likes to fly out of there and take off. So when you're pressing it down, you want to try and press evenly, but it may pop out like it just did for me. No big deal. Make sure you're doing it. My mat's pulled up to where nothing can roll under the bench. Um, that way you can find it. It will blend in pretty easily. So, and it's not a very big spring. All right, so we've got our stock one out and here's our new one going in. As you can see, there's your size difference. The Galloway one on the bottom, and the stock one on top. So see, about a 30% overall extension, not enough to really impede anything, but more than enough to make it easier to field strip. So let's go ahead and put it in, making sure that the cut, you see here, that nice cut, that goes facing to the back of the pistol, because that's where the uh, barrel's going to grab a hold of it and stay in place. So what I like to do is go ahead and put it in, all right, while I push it up, and then I'm going to take my needle nose. Does he, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Honestly, it's just such a small space to work in, it can 
take you a couple times. Uh, but that's also what the big pin punch is for because if this doesn't work for you, you can do it uh, with the pin punch. You can seat the spring. You can see the pocket for it right there. Okay. Little pocket right here. Trying to seat the spring while putting this in at the same time is just a non-starter. It's just, it's going to frustrate you and it's going to get in your way. So we take, we set our spring and it doesn't help. I got big fat fingers. Makes it super fun to try and do this. And all my tools are magnetized from a lot of use. All right, so we're gonna do it the pin punch way because I can't. It cooperated earlier when I did this. Now because I'm doing it on video, it's like, ha ha! Watch this. All right, so you get it in to its hole. You can compress it with the pliers and push at the same time it'll go in. Same principle with your pin punch. You get it in there, compress, slide it under. That's it. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to put it back together. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make sure that our spring, our trigger return springs are lined up. And yes, we will be bringing that kit back for these, uh, for the Gen 4s as well as the Gen 1 and 2 and 3s. All right, so now we're going to start with this spring. You can see the indentation right there that the flat part sits in. All right, now, as you can already guess, it's not gonna stay completely where you want it to. But try and get it to at least kind of sit in that pocket, and you can just push the locking block straight in and makes life a whole lot easier. Now, again, you may need your needle nose pliers. If you got big fingers like I do, Everybody watch Brandon struggle. All right, so we're gonna take our locking block, place it in, and that spring's probably gonna move like it just did. This is probably the most pain in the butt part of the whole thing. And tweezers will work just as well as small needle nose if you don't have small needle nose. Now, once I get this in properly where it's supposed to go, the spring shouldn't move around. If it's moving, it's not in its pocket. So this may take you a little while. Other thing that works really well is hemostats. I don't know where my small ones are though. I've misplaced them as of late, so I'll use a bigger pair. Great thing about hemos is it's kind of like miniature uh, vice grips you can just lock it lock it on the spring and make life easier for yourself all right so once you have that in there correctly go ahead and take your slide lock place it in all right we're going to put that one in first starting from right to left with the knurling to the right side Getting everything lined up is the biggest pain in the butt. Getting all this. And so what you may need to do is take your 332nd, use it like a dummy pin, so you can get everything lined up and started. All right, now we'll take our small flathead, I'll pop that spring right in there, that's it, we're done. All right, so now we can go ahead and use our 332nd again on the trigger and trigger springs as a dummy pin. All right. This time, driving from left to right with the knurling on the left. And then we're going to drive in our last pin from the right, knurling on the right, as we did the first one. Now, you want to make sure everything's equidistant. Go ahead and you don't want it tapped all the way through one side or the other. You want it to sit in the middle. See, my knurling don't work for nothing. We have taken this thing apart so many times. 
All right, and that's it, guys. Your extended takedown's in there. Now it's time to put the slide on. We can function test. Go ahead and rack your slide, pull the trigger. Striker should fall. Rack the slide, release, reset, fall, and you're good. And as you can see, you can actually see the takedown over the sides of the slide, and it is much easier to get a hold of. Okay? Easier to pull down, easier to get a hold of, and just makes disassembly much, much easier. It follows the same profile as the rest of the pistol, so it's not extending too far out, won't impede uh, holstering, unholstering, or anything like that. And that's it, guys. That's going to wrap this one up. Uh, this is another one that we will shortly be doing another uh, first hundred rounds video. And we've got uh, the trigger sent off uh, for 3D scanning. This is actually the trigger out of a Gen 2 DB9 I'm using for the video. Uh, but uh, we've got that off. This is actually, I don't know what it did, it was a little prototype we printed up similar design to what we're going to end up with uh, for a flat face with pre and post travel adjustment of course excuse me uh, we'll be looking at extensions uh, guide rods uh, optic mount plate the whole nine yards um, so we're real excited to get into this um, just the extended pinky on the new mags and the slightly uh, different grip angle it, it feels much better now having shot it into the blast box it's much more controllable uh, than the gen 1 gen 2 were so pretty excited to see what we're going to come up with this this thing uh, if you guys have any questions feel free to email me at tech that's tango echo charlie hotel at gallowayprecision.com be sure to follow us on social media here on youtube like comment and subscribe below be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, GunStreamer, and Vimeo. Uh, swing by the website or the Facebook page and sign up for the monthly newsletter and the weekly flash sale newsletter. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.